During your data project journey, you must have created tables, a very routine task. Even an entry level data engineer or a snowflake developer can do that. But this short and quick video will uncover many important aspects of creating and managing snowflake tables beyond the standard DDL statement. We already know tables are a schema level object in snowflake, be it standard or so called permanent tables or transient tables or temporary tables or external tables. We will primarily focus on permanent tables in this video and also understand its attributes like comment or time travel parameters. We will also learn different ways of creating a standard table in Snowflake. We will explore how to use SnowSite to create tables and check table properties as well as copy history metadata. We will learn different SQL commands to check table properties and how they bring different information to SnowSite table properties. So let's start. Welcome back to my channel Data Engineering Simplified. Everything covered in this video can be tried out with Snowflake's free trial edition. It grants all full privileges and enables all the features. If you have any technical questions, need architectural advice or want guidance on starting or migrating Snowflake project, don't hesitate to reach out to me on my Instagram account. You can also join my exclusive Facebook channel by scanning the QR code to request access. So this is my Snowflake free trial edition. Let's go to my worksheet and we are going to create a table called employee table and it has couple of attributes like employee ID, first name, last name and so on. The DDL construct looks pretty simple, create or replace table followed by table name. As we know, the tables in Snowflake are schema level object. So I can really go and choose my schema from here or run use command to change my database and schema. Let me do that. Now let me create this employee table. So my employee table is created successfully. Now we can run show tables like employee or we can simply run show tables. Let me run show tables first. Now the result shows I have only one table under this schema called demo public. It is employee and the kind column is saying it is a table. It has no rows, it has no data and the owner of this table is system admin. It has a retention time of one day. By default, time travel value is one day and all other parameters which we are going to discuss in our future video. If this is an external table, this flag will set as yes, but this is not an external table. Now let me run with like keyword and this is the result. Now let's insert couple of records into this table and see how show tables bring the volume of data as well as size of data. So I got a confirmation that five record inserted. Now let's run this command once again. If you look into the column rows, it says I have five rows and the size of the data is 4096 bytes. So by running show tables command, you can fetch detail about the table, how many rows it has, who owns the table, how many bytes of data does it have, whether automatic clustering is on and off, whether change tracking is on and off or not, or search optimization is enabled or not. So quite a lot of detail can be fetched using show table. I have alternate way to validate the table information. For that, I will go to table tab. So this is my demo database. This is my public schema. And within my public schema, I have tables and here I click on employee. I can really get the table definition. If I want, I can copy it. And I can also see who is the owner of this table and the table owner is system admin. It also says that it has total five records and the size of the record is four kilobyte. I can click on columns. Here it is ordinal. I have 11 column and if I would like to see the data preview, I can click on a data preview. All the employee ID is coming null because we wanted to showcase how the auto increment value works. So this is how you can use this explorer panel and you can fetch the attribute about the table. Let's go back to our worksheet. Now, if you want to attach a comment with an employee table, you can see in the line number 47, this is how the comment can be associated with your table. This is required because in many enterprise projects, they want to integrate the cataloging 
tools and the cataloging tool extract a lot of information from your table comment. Let's create it and run the show command. So the table is created successfully. Let's go back and run the show command. So I have given this percentage character. So it will fetch all the table. It starts with word employee. If you look into the comment column, it has the comment associated with the table. Now let's say you have a scenario where you have to give a space or some kind of a character. Let's see what happens when I try to run this create table. It ended with syntax error. The reason for that is Snowflake does not accept a space in its column name. To enable that, you have to wrap this column with double quote. So double quote will take the literal value and it will create a column with this literal value along with spaces and the case sensitivity. Now let's execute it. So my table is created successfully. Uh, let's use describe table command and see what happens. Let's first execute show command. I can see employee 3 is listed with comment. It does not have any data. Okay. Now when I execute describe table command, let's see what does it bring. So if you look into the column name, all the columns are uppercase. So if you give a column name, whether in uppercase or lowercase, all your column names into uppercase, including the table name. However, if you enclose your column names in double quote, then it will preserve the case sensitivity as well as any space or a special character it has, it will preserve it. If you have to insert the record into employee three table, which has this special naming pattern, you have to use this double quote wherever you want to access the column, else it will end in an error. Let's execute and insert a couple of records. Let's run the show table. I have total five rows and it has exactly four KB of data. Looks good. If I look into the employee three table, all the data set is populated, but employee ID is still empty. Snowflake allows to add auto increment keyword and you can attach primary key with your employee ID column. And this auto increment is nothing but under the hood, it calls a sequence object which start with one and it increments by one. So let's create this employee four table. Now I'm going to insert data into employee four table where it is start with a first name and doesn't start with employee ID. Let's execute this. It says five record got inserted. I can see I have employee ID available starting from one to five. Looks good. If I go back to my table view, let's see how does it look like. Even though we have not given not null, but we have specified auto increment followed by primary key keyword. It has translated the entire DDL into employee ID number not null auto increment. And if you look into the line number 13, it has a specified primary key as an employee ID. And if I look into the data preview, the data is looking good and make sure that if you're not able to see the data, probably you have to select the virtual warehouse. Let's talk about time travel parameter, which we can associate with our table. So I'm going to create a table called employee six and the structure looks exactly same with auto increment plus primary key. And if you look into the line number 15, I have a parameter called data retention time in days, which is equals to 10 and maximum data extension time in days is 15 days. Let me create this table. So my table got created successfully. So when I run show tables, let's see what does it bring. So for employee six, my time travel retention value is 10. It means if there is any problem, I can recover the data for last 10 days. By associating this parameter with a table, you can change the number of time travel period. Now, what is this max data extension time in days? So let's first populate data into this table. So the data got populated. Now let's rerun my show table. So for employee six, let's see what all parameters we have it. So number of rows are five, size exactly same. Retention period is 10. All other values are same. However, we are not able to track where this value 15 is going. 
Now, if I try to describe the table, let's see what happens. Describe table bring all the column name and if you pay attention to the default value, it says identity start one increment one and this is a primary key tag. However, I do not have any placeholder for this two parameter including comment because describe table only gives you the column name. I can run one more statement called get DDL. Let's run that. If I click on this. Here, I managed to fetch the comment value. However, the, those two parameters are missing and this is very important. So don't blindly rely on get DDL because it will only give you the structure and kind of a constraint and the comment, but it is not giving me the data retention time and max data extension time in days. If you have not seen my time travel video, I would request you to go and watch. I'm going to create an on my employee table. And if you look into the line number 37, this is how the SQL construct looks like. So my stream got created successfully. Since this stream is created on the top of my employee six table, if I run describe stream, let's see what does it bring. So it is giving me the name of the stream under which database and schema it belongs, owner. It is created on the table of employee six. So if you look into this value called stale after, it actually adds up 15 days from your current date. In the sense, if it is created on Saturday 2nd of September, then it will add another 15 days. And after the 15 days, your CDC or a delta changes will become stale. So that is how you can track the max data extension time in days. So we have understood how to create a table using a standard DDL statement, how we can specify data retention time in days, max date retention time in days, comment and auto increment and primary values. We also understood how to use show command, describe table, select get DDL statement. We'll try to understand is this the only way to create a table and what all are the alternate way to create the table. Let's create a table using a keyword called as select and this is how the syntax looks like. So we are going to create a table employee seven by referring employee six. And this is how the construct looks like. Let's execute this SQL statement. So my employee seven table got created. Let's see whether it has only created the table or it has also populated data. So if you look into the table structure, the table structure looks exactly same like employee six and the data also got populated. So if you have a scenario where you have to create a table and also populate data, you can always use as select keyword to create a table by referring another table. Now let me run this show tables command. If I look into the result, this is my employee seven table, which is created by referring employee six. So it has not copied the comment from the table six. It has also not copied the time retention value and change tracking is also off. So when you are using as a select statement to create a table, in that case, you have to remember that table is structure and data is copied. However, other attributes are not copied. Now let's describe the table to see the column structure. So the column structure looks same, no issues. However, the primary key and auto generated key are also not copied. If I run select get DDL statement for employee seven table, here I do not have any primary key and auto incremented values. But if I go for a table six, I can see I have auto increment and I have a primary key. So this is the key difference that it only creates a basic structure followed by data population. Moving next, I can also use like keyword to create a table. And in this case, I am creating employee eight by referring employee six. Let's run this command. So employee eight is created successfully. Let's see whether it has only copied the structure or structure plus data pool. So I do not have any data. It only created the structure. And if I run the show command, let's see if it has copied other parameters or not. So comment is not copied. Retention period is also not copied. So like a statement does not copy the data, does not copy all other parameters. It only copies the structure. And if I run my get DDL, so it has copied the structure as well as other constraint like auto increment and primary. So this is the key difference between as a select or like keyword.
Let's understand how to use using template keyword and create a table based on your data file available in the stage location. This is very well covered in a two separate videos and here you can find the link one from a CSV and another from a JSON data files. However, I will quickly explain. So I have already created a stage location. I have already created a file format. So when we are using the template keyword, my file format should not have a skip header. Let's see what file do I have in my stage location. So I have an employee file which has close to 10 records and the size is 120 bytes. If you look here, my location is referring to this file and file format is this file format and I'm going to create a table called employee 9. Let's quickly create that. So my employee 9 table is created successfully. Now if I describe the table, let's see what value does it bring. So it has created my employee ID, name, uh, all those things. And if I run a select star from employee 9 table, let's see what happens. It has not populated any record. So when you create a table using as select, it creates a structure. It also populates data. However, it does not consider your auto increment and other constraint from the referring table. In a like, it actually creates a table structure by referring the complete structure by referring constraint and other information. However, it does not copy the data. In create table using template, it helps you to create a table structure but does not copy the data. Now, we have another option where we can create a table using the clone keyword. Okay, let's see how does it behave. So I am going to create an employee 10 by following clone keyword. Employee 10 is created successfully. Let's run a select statement to see if it has populated all the data set or not. Yes, it has populated all the data. So it means that it has copied the structure and it has also copied the data. Now let's run the show command. This is my employee 10 and all the comment is copied, which is good. Your retention period is also copied. The change tracking is also copied. Okay, rest of the information looks same. Now, if I describe the table, so my identity column is copied, looks good. And here my primary key is also copied. And if I run select detail statement, so this including comment, everything is copied. So we have seen four different approaches to create a table. And if you want to copy a table, we have a multiple ways. If you want to copy only the structure, you want to copy structure plus data, or if you want to copy the structure, attribute, and data together, then we have a different mechanism to create a table. Now, based on your use case, you can decide which one is really, really appropriate. And accordingly, you can use that feature to create a table. Now, let's quickly see how we can check the copy history. So when we come to this screen, this screen helps you to populate all the table under table option. Then I have stages, I have file format and I have a stream. So even though I have cloned employee 10 from employee 6, my stream object is not copied. It has only copied the entire table structure. If you have loaded data into a table using a copy command, then you can always come to this screen and check how the copy history looks like. If you have not seen my data loading playlist, you can really see the data loading playlist and you will get a complete detail how the copy history screen looks like. The Snowflake tables hold many key insights. To become a Snowflake Cloud Data Warehouse Pro, make sure to catch all the videos in this playlist. Thanks for tuning in to this quick tutorial. If you have found it valuable, hit the like button. By doing so, YouTube will serve up more Snowflake content from my channel to help you on your Snowflake learning journey. Happy learning and keep on growing.